This is Brad for Argali, and I am getting ready to go on a backpack rifle mule deer hunt in October here in Idaho. I'm gonna show you everything that I'm taking with me on this hunt, and I'm also gonna show you how I like to pack it in my backpack. Okay, so I'm gonna run through everything I have packed here and I'm gonna do it as quickly and efficiently as I can here. And I'm gonna start with, there's a couple large things that's really hard to fit on this table. So first one, which I'm gonna set aside, this is the XO K4 backpack with the, uh, I think 5,000 cubic inch uh, bag on here. Um, I've also got the water bottle holder and the hip belt pouch on here, which are super handy. Um, really like this bag and this pack uh, for this trip. The other thing I have here for my sleeping bag, uh, this is a Feathered Friends Raven sleeping bag. So this is a 10 degree bag. This is definitely warmer than I'm gonna need for October for the most part. But in October in the mountains, um, here in the Rockies, you just never know how cold it's gonna get. It can get super cold or it can be warm, but I just kind of like to have a, a nice warm bag. So sleeping bag uh, first. Uh, second, I'm going to talk to you about my weapon system. Um, so we've got Nosler, 28 Nosler Mountain Carbon Rifle with the Vortex uh, 3 to 15 HD LHT scope. Love, love, love this rifle with this scope. It is fantastic. I use it for uh, several years now and really love this whole setup. Uh, new to me this year is a suppressor, which I'm really excited about using. This is the Nosler. Um, SR30 ALTI, just had to make sure I got that right. Um, so I'm really excited about using a suppressor this year, both for recoil as well as for hearing protection. Um, just makes shooting this gun a lot more enjoyable. So that's the rifle I'm gonna be using on this uh, mule deer hunt. Um, also have a, a Spartan Precision uh, bipod on the bottom here, really like this guy as well. So that's the weapon system. Um, I've got a pile of clothing over here. I'm not gonna run through all of it. My entire gear list, including my entire clothing kit, is gonna be listed in the, comp or in the description of this video so you can see it all there. But uh, just a couple things I wanted to make note of. So this is uh, October 10th is when our general season rifle opens here. And I just wanna note that there are some things that I take on, a, on an October rifle hunt that I don't take in a late September hunt. Um, that really includes uh, puffy layers and the type of rain gear that I bring. So on this hunt, I am going to bring the Omen rain jacket from First Light, which is their heavy duty uh, rain jacket, just because you can get, you know, if we end up getting a real big snow or some sleet or just some really heavy moisture, um, that rain jacket is just much better than a really thin light uh, jacket. Uh, I have zip off long johns, uh, puffy pants for glassing. Uh, I can't say enough good things about these. Uh, these are Uncompagre puffy pants. Love having these for cold October mornings. Um, it's pretty much by the time October hits, I pretty much always want these for glassing sessions. Archery hunting, uh, in even in late September, I really don't bring puffy pants, largely because when I'm hunting elk with a bow, I'm on the move all the time, uh, as opposed to when I'm rifle hunting for mule deer in early October, I'm usually sitting on a glassing knob for long periods of time. And so these puffy pants are really nice. So puffy pants, and then I've got uh, Chamberlain puffy right here, as well as the Brooks down sweater. So lots of insulative layers. This is, with this kit right here, like I could be comfortable in really cold weather. If it's not gonna be that cold, like before I go, I look at the weather, and I've got enough gear here and food for three days, so long weekend backpack hunting. Um, I would leave, let's say like the Brooks down sweater at home, if I look and it's gonna be down maybe into the, high 20s or around freezing, I would just take the Chamberlain Puffy and leave the uh, Brooks Down sweater. Okay, so that's clothing. Last thing I'll say is gloves. Um, I have three sets of gloves here that layer really nicely. Again, I would only take all three of these if it was gonna be really, really cold out. Um, if, I, if it's gonna be you know, around freezing temperature, I will leave the Brooks Down mitts at home and just bring these uh, um, soft shell gloves that are lined with fleece as well as these wool liner gloves together because they can wear these and then put these on top and that's a really nice uh, setup that keeps you warm. So I got a Kodiak belt for my pants and then the other thing for uh, Catalyst Foundry pants, those are my favorite first sight pants for those uh, mid-season hunts, even into the uh, beginning of the late season. 
side zips. They have like reinforced knees. They're just like a great all around uh, pair of pants. And I especially love them for uh, rifle hunting in that October range. Okay, next, let's move on to optic systems. So I already told you about my scope. Uh, this is the brand new uh, Vortex uh, Mini Razor Spotter. This thing is super impressive, right? So this is a 39X uh, spotter with the razor glass. It's super light and compact, but it really does reach out there and allow you to get a little bit more uh, detail uh, for glassing a distance. So when I pair this with a pair of 12 by 50 uh, Vortex Razor binos, which are inside here, pull them out real quick. Um, and I've already got my Outdoorsman's Bino tripod adapter on here, um, which I forgot was already on my binoculars. Tells you I've been using it recently. <laughs> so 12 by 50 binos with the mini razor spotter. This is a really great combo for mule deer. Um, and I like this for mule deer hunting because I like to be able to get a really good sense of antler size before I go casting off into the distance looking for something. Um, bino tripod adapter. This is the Outdoorsman setup. I really like this thing. And this mini one is nice uh, because you can leave it attached to your binos, which I'll do here. And it just fits really nicely inside this uh, FHF uh, bino harness system here. So you can slide that in and it just stays on there. So when, I, when I'm swapping between um, my spotter and my binos, it's really slick and easy, especially with the new Outdoorsman's. They have a brand new Outdoorsman's uh, pan head that you can fit both Arca Swiss as well as the old style um, outdoorsman's foot. So it's just really easy and quick with the outdoorsman's pan head to switch between spotter and binos, which I'm doing a lot of. Um, range finder, I got the Vortex. Um, I think this is the, oh gosh, the Razor HT4000. I should know the, the model number. Um, love that thing. It sits right there on the side of my FHF bino harness. Um, there's some optics for you. Uh, now let's move into food system real quick. So uh, dinners, I'm always going to do peak refuels. Um, so I have, I took out one day's worth of food. Here's my food right here. I've got uh, a couple more days of food right here in this pouch right here. So here's my lunch for the day. I've got a mix of bars, some almonds, um, some energy chews, and then a pro bar, honey stinger bar, um, and then some RX bars. So I really try and minimize my sugar intake um, during the day. I don't like a bunch of sugary foods, um, but this, this is like everything I'll need for the day. Um, I pulled out my coffee as a coffee snob. Um, this, is, this is a bunch more coffee than I actually need, uh, but this is Alpine Start coffees. I really like these things. Um, I, I am a, uh, been described as a coffee snob by uh, people around me, and I just really like these Alpine Start coffees. You can buy them on Amazon. They're not terribly expensive. Um, and they're just a standard and standard stick packaging, but I really like these things for coffee. Um, okay, so that's uh, food, dehydrated meals. Um, I've got some, let's talk about, uh, uh, actually, let's move to uh, talking about like stove system. So I've got the MSR wind burner. I've got a fuel canister inside of there. Um, that's all I need, that fuel canister. Um, if I'm doing one boil in the evening for dinner, um, and then I forgot to mention that for breakfast on this trip, I'm actually just taking some bars, uh, some perfect bars. So I don't have to boil any water for my breakfast in the morning. I just take a couple bars. So I'm only doing about eight ounces of water in the morning for coffee. And if I do that, one cup of coffee and dinner at night, this little fuel canister will last me like at least five days, but I can probably stretch it to six as well. So it'll last me a long time. Um, kill kit stuff, so we've got our high country pack, I've got our Serac knife, I've got a little ditty sack here that I'm going to put everything in. Uh, I've got a set of uh, uh, textured orange gloves uh, in here as well. Um, and then I've got some extra paracord for hanging quarters if I need to. Don't think I'll need that, but I've got it. Um, and then, let's see, I've also just some miscellaneous items. I've got long handled spoon right here. I've got uh, some hearing protection, which I keep. These are, uh, even with the suppressor, theoretically, I don't think you really need it, but um, I've already lost a lot of hearing from shooting a lot of guns. So like I try to be extra careful these days and just double uh, have hearing protection in addition to shooting with the suppressor. I've got our X3 adapter. 
um, for connecting my poles together on a uh, tent. I don't need that for, for this trip. I'm going to take our ring content, so I only need one trekking pole to pitch the tent. Um, but I do use that for attaching my binos to my trekking poles um, when, I, uh, when I want to. I've got a little SOG multi-tool here, which I, I like to carry with me in case I need it. Lighter, carbon X poles, our ring con 2P tent. Um, I've, got the, uh, I've got a Vortex um, tripod and pan head right here for a sleeping pad. So by the time October hits, um, I don't take my lightest weight sleeping pad. I actually like this X pad. This is the Sinmat UL Winter. So this is a warmer pad. So again, like if the weather's going to be nice and warm, you don't necessarily need an insulated pad. But, but again, in the mountains in Idaho, it can change real fast. And the thing that keeps you warm, uh, it's as important as your sleeping bag is to having the appropriate pad. Because if you have a warm sleeping bag, but you have a super thin uh, pad that isn't insulated, it's going to be really hard to stay warm. So your pad and your bag are really important for staying warm in the mountains in the backcountry. So a little bit warmer pad. Um, for boots, I've got these uh, Schnee's Beartooth boots. These are actually a brand new pair. I um, haven't even worn them yet. Um, nice thing about these Schnee's Beartooths, they fit me so well that I can put on a brand new pair and just start walking. I've done it many times and I have zero issues. I don't have to break them in or anything. Um, so this is like my favorite kind of all around October mountain hunting boot. Um, I've got one Nalgene water bottle and uh, here they are, two platy bladders that I'm gonna bring. So this will stay with me kind of in my, uh, in the backpack. And then these I will bring into camp. And then if I end up needing to pack water because I'm camping somewhere that's not close to water, I have uh, four liters of water that I can put in these platy bladders here. Um, the one thing I forgot to mention, or two things actually, just for, I got a butt pad and I got a, uh, I've got a thermo rest pillow right here. Um, and then I've also got a, a bandana, which if you're watching our videos, you know, I like to bring, I bring this for some protection, also use it um, to tie to a tree if I need to, um, uh, trying to like mark where I'm at. If somebody I'm with a buddy and they're trying to like see me, I can tie that off to a tree. Um, but lots of uses for bandana, I always like to have one. Um, this FHF, um, rifle sling. I really like this thing, like used it last year and uh, really plan to use it this year as well. Just a real great sling that makes carrying your rifle on your shoulder, on your pack, like truly hands-free. So I can just, you know, walk as much as I want, not have to worry, uh, walk and not have to worry about my, my gun falling off my shoulder. Um, last thing I'll say is I've got our Skyline TI stove and stove pipe over here. So again, like I'm going to show you if it, the, uh, how, to, how I carry um, our stove. If I was leaving on this trip and it didn't look like it was gonna be that cold since I'm only going for three days, I wouldn't take a stove with me. If the weather looks questionable at all, I'm gonna take the stove with me. Uh, so it's one of those items that um, early October, like I may take it, I may not take it. It kinda just depends on the circumstances. If it's gonna be bad weather, I guarantee I'm gonna take that stove with me because it's just gonna make for a much more comfortable camp. Um, especially if the weather turns south. So I think that's everything. Uh, and oh, sorry, water treatment, aqua mirror tabs. Almost forgot that. But I think that's everything now. So now I'm gonna show you how I pack everything up um, and put everything on their pack. There's a lot of stuff here. And it might seem like I can't fit it all in that backpack, but trust me, it all fits. So first thing I'm gonna do is put all my small items away. So kill kit, not my hearing stuff. How about that? Knives, put my game bags. This is all going in this little pouch right here. Zip it up. Let's set this over here. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is start stuffing things that I know go in the side pocket. So spotter goes in the side pocket right here for easy access. Um, when we did my archery hunting uh, backpack list, I got some questions and comments about why I didn't put my sleeping bag on the bottom. So my heavy stuff came uh, further, rides further up of my back. And there's a couple reasons I don't typically do that. Number one, that sleeping bag is, uh, it's really lofty. So if I push that bag down to my bag first, I really have to like push down on everything else really hard in order to get it to compress. And then it's just kind of annoying to fill the backpack up. 
Whereas if I put my sleeping bag in last, it kind of fills in the space around a lot of my other gear. Uh, so I like to put a couple things down in the, on this hunt. I'll show you, I'll put my, my puffy jackets on the bottom uh, because they're not quite as lofty. And then I'm gonna start putting some of my hard gear and my heavy items uh, in next. And I'm gonna put those close up against the back of my backpack here. Uh, and then try and put my loftier items, my lighter weight items towards the exterior of the pack. So that way your weight is against your back and uh, somewhere either in the middle or lower part of it. I don't like having a lot of weight up high because that makes it feel like you're gonna tip over. So um, again, there's not necessarily, I don't, I'm not suggesting there's a right or a wrong way to do it. That's just the way I do it. So I'm gonna put one down jacket in there. I'm gonna pack all this stuff, even though like I mentioned, like I probably wouldn't take all these clothing layers. Um, there's, I might cut it back just a little bit, um, depending on the, uh, if I knew what the, the weather wasn't gonna be as bad before I went in. So rain jacket, stove, going in next. And I'm gonna try and shove these down against my backpack, or my back. And then food. Okay. Keep my bandana out so I know where that's at. Gloves, just gonna get shoved in here. I'll shove them around down low. Okay. Kill kit. Shove them down. This is really awkward packing up my backpack on this table. Okay. So this little pouch on this K4 pack, I really like this thing for things that I want quick access to. So like headlamp goes in there, earplugs go in there, um, and my inReach is gonna go in there for now. And then my X3 adapter, wherever I knocked it off to, would go in there as well, but I'll grab that later. So those are gonna go in there. Uh, water filtration. So I like to keep this in a handy spot. I'm gonna put uh, my Aquamere drops in this uh, pouch right here, in my water bottle holder, because I don't have anything else that's going in there. Platy bladders are going in the pouch over here. Opposite the uh, side my spotter's going in. I'm gonna bring these puffy pants, these long underwear, put those in there. And again, this is like part art, part science here. So I'm gonna wear this. I'm obviously gonna wear my bino harness, pillow, and get shoved in here. Butt pad, outside pouch. Tent, oh, forgot about you almost. This is super light actually. Throw that in the top. Okay, so now, got it kind of compressed down. I'm gonna put my bandana on my top lid here so I know where it's at. Water bottle. Right there. Boots are gonna get worn, obviously. I'm gonna put my sleeping bag, that's everything now. So now I'm gonna put my sleeping bag in here. I'm gonna start with the end of it so that way it's easier to push the air out just a little bit easier. Oh, this is so much harder to do at this angle. And we got the ground. So let me set this on the ground real quick. So if you shove it down, you can really just kind of take a handful and compress it down, shove it down into little spaces around everything else. And voila. I'm gonna roll that bag up. Okay, so now pack is packed. I'm gonna take my tripod. Now I'm gonna be using my trekking poles. I'm not gonna attach those to my backpack, but they can obviously go on the sides of your pack. Okay. Um, I am going to put my rifle uh, on the side of my pack, and then I am going to put my uh, 
uh, if I wasn't going to take the stove, I would put the rifle right in the back of the backpack here. But just to show you how you can really like load this bag down, I'm going to kind of strap everything up here. It isn't going to look super pretty, um, but it works. So I'm going to run, see this, this uh, handle strap here? I'm going to run the top strap, goes across here. I'm going to run that through the handle. And over here, I'm going to try not to, uh, the thing that you got to remember with these stoves is like, try not to crush them too much. So I'm going to make that snug without trying to crush it. I'm going to bring that down so I can get the other strap over it. Okay. And the stove pipe, um, now there's lots of places this could go. You can put this in one of your water bottle holders on the side. Um, I'm going to put it on top of the lid here, underneath the lid, just so I don't crush it too much. Again, this is like, if you want a nice pretty pack where everything just is nicely tucked away, when you get to the stove, it's kind of hard to do that. Um, you can put the stove and the stove pipe inside your backpack if you have a bigger bag. I'm just not doing that right now. So again, I'm not saying this is how you have to carry it, but uh, if you got a full backpack with winter gear, which I have right here, this is, gives you some options for how you carry it, okay? That can be adjusted. Okay, all right, last thing to go on, rifle. So EXO makes a rifle sling, has like a butt attachment, so the rifle butt sits right here. <clears throat> I forgot mine, so I don't have it right here. But it is a very handy way to uh, attach a rifle. My uh, Spark Precision, attaches right to the bottom side of my bino harness too, so that's where that thing's gonna live. So, I like to run my strap, so even without that, uh, you don't have to have a uh, attachment to strap your rifle down. I find that like if you have your strap running right along your scope mount base there, as long as it's not really pushing super hard on your scope, it'll, uh, it'll be fine. I've got this backwards, I want to run it like this. So my scope is facing in. I don't want my scope facing this way, as that way as I'm walking, if I happen to like go up against a tree or something, I'm not, that tree's not gonna knock my scope, it'll hit my rifle first. Okay. And then this strap, I would just put over the top here. It's a lot easier to do if you're not trying to do it on top of a table for a film video right here. Okay. And the other thing I'll say is that uh, let me get this snug now. You can see as you shift it around, you gotta re-snug everything up. Okay, so there you go. I've got all my stuff in here. I've got rifle, stove, stove body, stove pipe. Everything is in the pack, ready to go. Um, and I can take off. The last thing I'll say, I forgot to mention, I've got a pistol holster right here because um, I was just in Wyoming and I carry a 10 mil pistol for, uh, for bears. Uh, I'm not going to take that here on my Idaho trip, so I will take this off. But that is everything I'm going to take. Check out the video description for a full gear list, as well as links to many or most or all of the products that you saw here today, and hope you found this useful.